Welcome everyone to the Platform Special Interest Group. Uh, it's the 26th of March. Thanks for being here. So proposed agenda items, talk about open action items, uh, open container labeling for our Docker images was a topic that we'd wanted to discuss in, oh, oh, I should put one in here, which is summary of the, of the uh, containers and platforms track from the Contributor Summit. Uh, and uh, that would be me and Kara and, and Gareth, I think. Okay, then open container labeling for our Docker images of proposal. We had coordinating Docker, proposed Docker changes. I think that's probably still worth a, t a topic of conversation, isn't it? Are there other topics that you'd like to be sure we get on the agenda? All right. Oh, oh I, take, I take it back. I have one. Yes, I have one, which is uh, the She Code Africa uh, April event uh, and uh, April Contributhon. Contributhon. Uh, and I wanted to talk about that briefly. Anything else? All right. So uh, first action item, the JEP on Docker operating system support. It was uh, discussed in depth during the, uh, during the contributor summit. And we've got agreement that the techniques we're proposing match and it justifies a JEP. So so they the, had good feedback from Daniel Beck and from others on the topic. Hey, are you sure about this? What about this? How will you display it? Um, suggestion from Daniel was that we might consider uh, a way of using an administrative monitor uh, to alert people when the Docker image they're using is now up for adoption. So uh, I don't know how to do that, but I, I know that there are plenty of examples of uh, of administrative monitors that show information like that. And so I think it's a good candidate to include in the JEP. Any questions there? Okay. Um, blog post on in plugin installation manager and update center. Um, Gareth and I were having this conversation, I think, just yesterday, and and I tend to agree now that we need more and we need to inform people about what's available in Plugin Installation Manager, just how powerful it is. Um, Gareth, was there? I think you had you had learned of a specific feature that was was oh nice to nice to realize, but because we don't have active documentation for it on www.jenkins.io, it wasn't immediately obvious that that feature was there. Yeah, I, I built the UC tool because I was unable to update um, plugin text files with the latest plugins matching a Jenkins version. But that is actually functionality that Plugin Installation Manager supports. We just didn't know about it. Yeah, so for me, I think that's that's a good a good excuse for us to consider this as a blog over the course of the next few weeks that, hey, let's, or, or a documentation page and a blog post that points people to the documentation page. Right now, I'm not as clear where it would fit in the documentation. So I got to think about that a little bit and I'll, I'll include that in a pull request. Alex, you, your PR on <clears throat> replacing the internals of install plugins.sh is still needing review. I apologize, I'm behind on that. I, I hope that one likewise within the next few weeks. Any insights you've gained in the in this waiting period of things that we need to be aware of? I don't think so. Um, I, I've I've just been super busy with work, so I, I haven't kept up on it and asked for reviews and things like that. But um, if anybody wants to review it, I think the PR link is in the uh, notes. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is, and. Uh, 
Yeah, so so that's just and and I think Alex, rather than having you do that blog post, if you're okay with it, I'd like to take that one on because it needs a it needs a where does it go in the documentation question to be answered. Is that okay with you? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, great. All right, um, latest changes. So I've not I've not seen any outrage on the Debian nine to Debian ten upgrade or on the CentOS change, and they're both delivered and running. So congratulations. And we did have good interactions with Jim in, where was it? Was he in the Contributor Summit? I forget if we, uh, yes, we, I think we had him in the Contributor Summit, Summit session discussing further refinements on multi-arch support for our Docker images. All right. Any any questions or concerns on the um, on topics related to action items? Okay, so here I was just going to bring up the slide that we use to talk about containers and platforms. Uh, Alex, this is probably as, as a good place for us to discuss. Hey, did we say something that? sounds to you like it's outrageous and that was crazy so here's what here's what we said continue the 2020 roadmap work in, on multi-platform docker images including arm s390 and powerpc uh, then improving our image governance and this is where we describe the jep ideas discuss those in some depth image maintainers adopt this image accelerating our Docker builds that was greeted with with positive view from Daniel Beck and the security team. Thanks for everyone for being willing to consider it. And then scanning the Docker images and the securing the delivery pipeline segment also had a scanning topic. Their scanning topic was more scanning source code and dependencies for issues, but it's the same scanning tool provided by the Linux Foundation a commercial commercial license to sneak. So it, it's, it looks very promising that, hey, this thing is possible in the, in the track discussing containers and platforms. One of the big concerns was how do we deal with the mass volume of alerts and warnings that come from these kind of security scanning tools? I, I've looked at tentatively one of them and it alerts about things related to SSL and, and where there isn't a change available from the operating system to do anything about it. So I, I, it's not clear to me yet how that's exactly going to work, but I think it's the right thing to have on our roadmap. And then, then we, we highlighted that we wanna continue doing cloud, cloud improvements. And in particular, we continue to use Helm Charge for the Jenkins infrastructure and we're grateful that the community is providing a, a Jenkins controller Helm chart. Gareth or Kara, anything that you wanted to highlight as other crucial things that we may, oh, oh, wait a sec, one more thing, the not list. And the not list included that we, do, we are not likely to do Java 15, but Tim Jacome noted, hey, the scheduled release date for Java 17, the new LTS of Java is expected to be the, the fall of 2021, so autumn of 2021. And he's seen that Jenkins works and compiles and tests just fine on Java 15. So we may, we may yet have this one come in, but we specifically said it's not on our not on our plan for right now to do anything in 2021. Corrections, questions, concerns? I think that's valid because I think there are more people using Java 7 than Java 11. I think the stats. <laughs> yes, yes. And that's that's a that's a, a keen observation, right? That, oh dear, we've got an LTS version that we fully support, that we did a significant work to get Java 11 support in, but still it's, it is not a terribly popular platform, right? Now, okay. now Oh, sorry, go on. No, no, go ahead, Gareth. I was I was going to talk about the um, security scanning stuff. Um, hmm. There may be an opportunity to chat to Fred Blaze about Defect Dojo. 
Mm. That's one of the tools that he produces. And um, it is meant to be very good at taking security events from a wide range of things. So like different scanning tools. I think he has got there. There is integration with Snyke already um, and presenting it in a way that um, can be managed. So that might, there might be an opportunity there because it is it's an open source tool. So you say it's called Defect Dojo. Defect Dojo is what CloudBees use internally to manage security defects, but it's an open source tool that is, um, I think Fred is actually one of the main maintainers of it as well. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we could, we should have a conversation with him about, can we, yeah, what does it support? Can we get it up and running? Would it be useful um, for this kind of stuff? And I suppose whether Daniel would find it useful. That sounds interesting. Good. Okay. To assist. So what it's done is it, it get it collects scanning results from various tools and allows people to process them to I assume ignore some to to flag others as more important. Yep, exactly that. Nice. And Mark, just so I'm I'm clear, are we using the um, the SNCC based security tool from the Linux Foundation that we have? Uh, potential to use through the Continuous Delivery Foundation. There are, yeah, that's the one we're using. Okay. Well, using is using is a very that's a very generous use of that gerund verb using, right? <laughs> it's we we plan to use that that. So yes, I'm I'm experimenting with it, but my experiments are not using the they're just using a, a SNCC uh, free account, whereas the the Linux Foundation account, as I understand it actually has additional features that are only available to commercial consumers of SNCC. So the foundation, I believe, has negotiated with, with SNCC to get additional capabilities available to us. Yes. And I think there's a way for the Jenkins project to apply to use it through the CDF, and we should. Yeah, absolutely. So that's, and, and I think, I think, I suspect there are, the project has already applied and it's already actually being used on Jenkins content, but there's still some registration stuff that needs to happen. And for instance, Oleg in the session was, was demonstrating and there were a couple of bumps and bruises that we need to talk to Alex, the Linux Foundation. All right, any, anything else on summary of the, the results or Alex, any questions from you on, hey, what was said or concerns? No, all looks good. Okay. All right. So next topic was open container labeling. So Gareth, um, you want to give us an overview of that? And yeah, so I think this came up in the containers and platform, the, the um, contributor summit as well. I think Damien raised this as a an option. Um, it's just it's about that there are two um, specs at the moment. There's the label schema and open container. I'm not sure what it's called, labels or annotations spec, um, but they seem to offer the same kind of thing. Um, there are a common set of labels that you can add to your Docker containers um, just to try and provide some hints on where that Docker image has come from, um, how it was produced, uh, you know, git repo, commit hash, um, when it was built and, and other information as well that you may want to add to it. Um, and yeah, I think this is just an idea that we should come up with a common set that we would like to attach to all of our images um, and start doing that. Um, yeah. Now, there was a PR, <clears throat> I think yeah. I mentioned this last time, is that one of those schema specs? Yeah, or so I think that was the label schema spec um, that it added. It added most of the sort of static labels, I would say. Um, so it's like descriptions and maintainers and that kind of stuff. It had the Git URL, but it didn't contain any SHA in there um, or commit message or anything like that. So you could see exactly at what point it did. So, so to change that, you actually, you obviously need to do that at build time 
rather than just add them statically into the um, into the Docker file itself. Yeah, so we need to move that over to um, our own infrastructure rather than yes. doing those builds on Docker Hub. Yeah, Docker Hub is uh, problematic for that. I think unless unless there is a way that they they pass a build arg or something that of of a um, commit hash, which I've I've not seen them do that. I don't know whether that's something that they've changed, but um, yeah. But I think we should kind of. I don't know whether we want to support both specs or whether um, we we should choose one of those specs to support. Um, oh, whichever one we pick, someone will be angry that we didn't pick the other one. So if, <laughs> if it's if it's easy to do both, we should probably just do both, um, just so that we don't get lots of complaints. Because you know, whichever one we choose, you know, someone will be all up in arms that we didn't choose the other one. So. Hopefully there's not a third one introduced anytime soon. <laughs> and then there, there may also be some additional labels that we want to support. Um, yeah. What, one of the ones that I find really easy is, um, or really, really handy is to put in the git state, the git tree state um, and whether or not it's dirty or clean. Uh, so that I, when I'm debugging an issue, I can see that somebody has uh, made a modification and built it on their desktop uh, and pushed it up and it's not to come from Git. Uh, yeah, I think this sounds great. I think Damien also had an idea of some additional labels as well that would be handy, so. Right. Great. Anything else, Gareth, there? So it seems like this one is dependent on our eventual transition to building the images on our own infra, but that we've got to do anyway for S390, likely for ARM64 and for PowerPC. So, so that's an eventual transition no matter what, right? We're, we're making that transition as part of our roadmap. Yeah, and we I can, I th yeah, we can add a subset of the labels at the moment, I think. So the ones that are oh. relatively static, we, we can add those up front. Um, but to get a sort of a complete set and probably the, the more useful labels um, like commit char, uh, you probably, and build date and things like that, you probably want to um, yeah, move, it, move the infrastructure over so we have control over those. Well, but I, I, I had missed that. that. I think that's a, a valuable thing. We could immediately add those, those more static labels. And that way, there may be some people who already get value. And we then are reminded, oh, yes, let's keep using the static labels. And as we make more transitions, we add more static labels. Yeah, I like that a yeah. lot. Alex, did you have a comment there? Um, yeah, but I forgot what it was, so. <laughs> Super. Okay. All right. So, so anything else on container labeling? I'll just put in the chat. I wrote a tool to help us do that and inspect the images. I'm just gonna put that in if anyone finds that useful. Yeah. Let me put a link to it. That's. Inspect tool to view and view labels. It, it can also help you generate the labels when you're building the image. Oh, okay. And now technology-wise, how are those labels actually applied? They're not tags in the sense of a tag, there's some sort of metadata associated with the Docker image? Yeah, in the, ban in the Docker sort of manifest, there's a section for labels it's just like key value pairs okay and then and then the, the the key thing here is the schema spec is what allows people to comprehend to make sense of what we what we package inside that manifest yeah it's just they're just uh, they're a common um a common set of labels that it sort of says that you should add um, got it okay excellent all right 
next topic then she code africa april contribute on so alex this was a this was me spinning an angle that you may want to check with your employer i'm checking with mine uh, and it's looking promising what there is is there is a team of open source contributors and well there's an organization in in western a or in africa called she code africa and one of their leaders zinab abu bakar is a Jenkins documentation contributor. And she's noted that they have upcoming a contributhon where they're going to seek sponsors, seek commercial sponsors who fund them uh, to then pay women in Africa to contribute to open source projects. And they have sponsorships available. My thought was if your employer is interested in sponsoring these kind of things where various groups, we would like to increase their involvement in tech, it might be worth you asking. I know I've asked my employer and I'm getting good promising results that they're likely willing to support a this this kind of initiative. So I'll, I can put the links to it. Yeah, that'd be great. Are you going through your like um, HR for that or what? Yeah, that's okay. what that's what that we've got a we've got a diversity and a diversity and inclusion group now okay. that's been yeah, we formed have one inside too. the company and, and that kind of thing is is okay. where yeah and my guess was you've probably got it and i think i'm gonna i'm gonna ping jim crowley as well because i'm reasonably confident that that ibm's got something similar and so yeah here it is so this is the link to it so what this is is right now they're assembling um donations from from sponsor companies and then during the month of april these women will be assigned tasks from project ideas that open source projects have suggested and will be paid to contribute to those tasks. So it gets them involved and it has the benefit that they're funded while they do it. So they're not just donating their time. Awesome. Um, yeah, I think, I think it's absolutely brilliant. And it, it's a great excuse for people to, for companies to help out in this way. So let's see. So she she code Africa dot org, uh, right? Yeah, okay. she code Africa dot org, and the contribute thon is described on their events page. Perfect. I will reach out today. Excellent. Thank you. And and the sponsorships range from a thousand dollars to five thousand dollars for corporations. Certainly, you could sponsor beyond, but what what their goal the way the way Zenob described it was they will be delighted if they get forty thousand dollars in sponsors. And my thought was between your employer, my employer, and Jim's employer, we might be a significant way towards funding She Code Africa with just the, those three companies. So, it, for me, it was it was it's very attractive as a way for us to do some diversity work. Awesome. Now, project ideas are a little more complicated in that we need to find those project ideas. Um, I'm not sure there are specific platform related project ideas. But I think it's worth us considering as a platform SIG, what would what could we have them do that have a contributor do that might help? And there may well be thing parts of our roadmap where they would they would really benefit and we would benefit. Great. Yeah, I'll definitely reach out today to my uh, inclusion and diversity team. Great. Thank you. Super. Yeah, and uh, let's see, in terms of maybe maybe we could take a few minutes here and talk about what are some project ideas we might see that the plat that are platform specific. For instance, could we consider having them, well, let's see, what have we got on the roadmap? If I think about roadmap topics, we've got, well, how about, um, I guess ARM64, ARM64 might work if one or more of theirs have a Raspberry Pi 4. Now that's that's kind of a, 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 a rather strange thing, but you never know. I mean, Pi 4 can actually run 64-bit ARM, right? And so ARM64 support might be a possible. Mm -hmm. um, the others might, Let's see. Yeah, I don't know about the labeling. I guess maybe test test improvements. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the suggestions from Damien had been techniques to accelerate the speed at which we perform certain of the tests. He's found a, a Google tool that does 
that will inspect the contents of a Docker image or test a Docker image without actually running the image. And it seems to be faster than starting and stopping the image process. Um, so test improvements might be a might be a candidate. Other suggestions? Certainly documentation uh, and yeah, has, has been one that we've discussed, but that's not specifically to the platform and screenshot updates because we're getting a, a significant change to the UI in March and we need to update pictures. All right, next topic, proposed Docker changes. So multi-arch builds, uh, install plugins.sh. Uh, still in progress. Cara, on the non-root user, on the agent Docker image, you want to give us a, how's it going there? What do we need to help with? What are the challenges, et cetera? That, that is a good question. It, it's actually all fine. It's had a bit of a delay because I, I just got pulled into other things like, I don't know, talks and stuff. So I, I have not worked on this in um, well over a week, but it's pretty close to done, and I now have a clearing in my time, which I will give a push on this. Well, similar so for no, the Docker builder. Did, so there's there's we, no particular blockers. Thank you for your offer, but there's no particular. It's it's just me needing to see it, make sure it gets done. Um, that's fine. Yeah, so and same I, with the Docker builder. I thought there was some. Maybe I, I thought I had understood that there was still some some open question on non-root or is that all been resolved as far as you you know oh i think there was like one or two more pieces of work that needed to be done but that it was getting to be pretty close okay all right okay so but you're not aware of anything that's that's in your way no just me <laughs> okay all right that, <laughs> yeah it's fine that's <laughs> that's you, great <laughs> hey hey volunteers are volunteers there is no obligation on volunteers right there's just none <laughs> it's like your your time is is deeply appreciated and very kind that you you give it thank you all right any other topics we should discuss here today Okay, so we Jim mentioned verbose tagging, and I think that's still just we need to keep making progress on that. We using the follow the tagging pattern that we're using in the Windows images, and Adoptium is showing the same tagging pattern as well. So that for me just feels like a good good plan. All right, I think that's it then. No other topics? Let's call an end. I'll post the uh, recording later today. Thanks, everybody.